Greetings everyone and welcome to a tutorial on how to create liveries for the Phoenix A320 from Microsoft Flight Simulator. We will only use three softwares today, which can all be acquired for free. It is also important to note that most of the steps in this video can also be applied to other aircrafts, but some techniques may differ from one to another. The livery we will be producing today as an example will be the Air Canada Tango Charlie Foxtrot Papa Whiskey Echo. This subsidiary branch of Air Canada only existed for four years and ended in 2004. The first software we will need for our livery creation today is Blender. It is a 3D modeling software which can also be used for texture painting. We can download it on their site at blender.org, but it will also be available in the description below. Once it is downloaded, you can go ahead with the installation process, which is pretty quick. For the aircraft we're currently working on, the Phoenix A320, we will need the development version of our second software, GIMP. It is available on GIMP.org, but will again also be available in the description. We can download it in the Download tab and scroll a little bit down. Here, we click on Development Downloads page and click on Download GIMP 2.99 directly. There we go. And once this one is downloaded too, you can go ahead with the process, which is like Blender, pretty quick. There is a tool we will need for creating our livery, which I did not include in the software as mentioned. Don't worry, it is free too, but it is available on the website flightsim.to, which is really popular for uploading Microsoft Flight Simulator stuff. It is created by Tommy HBK, and you can download it here. Once the download is done, you can open the .zip and create on your desktop a folder in which you will paste all the files. Well, I'll call it a thumbnail gem. You can open it and drag all the files in it. We will need it for later. The last software we will use for our delivery creation today is Notepad++. We will use this software for editing text files which include titles and descriptions of our livery. It is available on this website but will again be included in the description. Let's download the latest version. Once it is downloaded, you can go ahead with the installation as we did for Blender and GIMP. It is again pretty simple. Congratulations, you have downloaded all the softwares needed for creating your livery. But, you may notice something's missing. Yeah, the Phoenix A320 Paint Kit. This will be available on their Discord, right here. It will be available again in the description. We will go on the announcement channel and scroll up a bit. There, we will find a link which, by clicking it, will download the Paint Kit automatically on your browser. While your 1.3GB paint kit is being downloaded, I would recommend creating a folder on your desktop in which you will put all your images and decals. I'll just call it decals, and it will be useful for later. Now that we have our .zip for the paint kit downloaded, let's open it. Now we will create another folder on the desktop in which we will put it. I'll call it Phoenix A320 Paint Kit. There we go. So let's open it and drag all the files in it, like we did for the thumbnail generator. Now that we have everything, we can go ahead with our livery creation. The first thing I'm going to do is search for the airline logo. I would recommend going on Wikipedia, because most of the time they have an SVG format for the logo. This allows for great upscaling and high quality. We'll do that for Air Canada Tango. Yep, there we go. Even if the resolution seems low here, we can upscale it later. It will be really useful. Now let's look at our aircraft again. We can analyze what we are going to change and what we are going to produce. So first, we can see that the logo we have downloaded doesn't seem to need any modification, which is pretty nice. The engines are white and completely white, they have the basic decals for the A320. This means we won't have to 
modify them. We will just export what we have in the paint kit. We can see that the winglets are in only one color, which is the purple from Air Canada Tango. We will only paint them this color. We have in the back the registration and the website. This is in purple and we will find the, the font for it. It seems like the door decals may be painted in purple. We'll find out this uh, by looking at other images. And we have the tail. This is just an Air Canada logo in which we will change the colors. We also have a fin number 402. This will be important. I also noticed something else. The fin number is also on the front gear door. We will surely add this. And just one last thing before we go. It seems like the gear color is a little bit darker than white. That means we will have to create a gear texture in which we will lower the exposure of the rims. This will be useful to know for future liveries, where sometimes the back gear is completely black. Let's keep our image near, and let's start with the decals. Let's open GIMP. And it may take a while, the development version is a little bit different than the normal one. Now, let's pick our colors. The first thing we're gonna do is copy our Air Canada Tango logo, which we had downloaded prior. We will put it in the decals folder we created. There we go. Now, let's go back to GIMP and open this file. We go on desktop decals and air Canada Tango dot SVG. Now it's gonna ask us uh, what resolution do we want. As we're doing an 8K livery which will be downscaled to 4K, let's put a very high value. I'll put 10,000 wide. Now I'll put the plus to make sure everything is updated like this. Great. Now, let's pick our colors. I'll take the pencil, zoom in, press left control and left click. This automatically picks the color we want. Here. We will now create a new image in which we will put the registration. 10,000 seems a little bit too much. We will put 5,000. Nice. As you can see, there's a background color because I did not select any transparency. To change that, we will go in the layer here, press right click, and press add alpha channel. Now, we can go in the bucket here and select the erase option. And like this, we have only transparency. Let's look at our image again. It seems like the registration is in Arial. I'm not sure, but we will compare. Let's select the text option and type Charlie Foxtrot Papa Whiskey Echo. Now we can see that it is too small. Let's press Ctrl A and it will select everything. Here we can select the size. Let's put around 500. That's better. And now, while we have everything selected, let's try and put Ariel. Okay, this does not look too bad. Yep, that looks good to me. We can now export it in the decals folder. Let's title it. Oop, sorry. Let's title it Charlie Foxtrot Papa Whiskey Echo dot PNG. Nice. Now we have some options to choose. The compression level. As it is a pretty small image with only text, I can put the compression level to zero. It will also be deleted later, so it won't take too much space on your computer. Once this is exported, we can try and do our website. As you can see, it kinda looks like Arial 2, but bold and rounded. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's select with Control A and change to www.flytango.com. 
now. Let's put a different font, but which is also Arial. It is Arial rounded empty bold. Nice. This is similar, but it has to be a little bit oblique. So we will select this tool, press right click, and shear. And we will advance it of about 75%. You can select it here, minus 75. Great. Now, we can export it and do the thin number. Pretty much the only decal left for this aircraft now is the tail. As we can see, we do not have the lighter purple. I have found on Google this image, which is available on joydecals.com. We can put it in our decal section. Like this. Now, let's open it with GIMP. Like this. And let's switch to secondary color. Let's put our pencil again and select it. Like this. That makes more sense. We will now do the same thing as we did in the beginning for the SVG. Let's go on Google and put Air Canada. Now let's go on the Wikipedia page and download the SVG. We will put it in the decals folder again. Like this. As we only want this part of the logo, let's go in the image tab canvas size, and put a value a little bit higher than the height, like 3000. We can press center here and drag it to the place we want. Good. Now let's right click on the layer and press layers to image size. That's better. But we want to color around it, so we will right click again, layer boundary size, and Let's put a very high value, like 6000 for both, and drag it in the middle, like this. Now it is not showing, so we'll go in the Image tab and press Fit Canvas to Layers, like this. While we have our secondary color selected, let's color it. So let's press the bucket and press the Normal mode. Now let's make sure our trestle is pretty high to make sure everything is colored in the leaf. So we'll just put it somewhere here. That looks good. Let's see from further back. Yep. Great. Now let's select our primary color by clicking here and color around it. Looks good. Now let's zoom it to make sure there's not any mistake. Looks good. We can finally export this because we're gonna use it in Blender. We are also gonna do the same thing for the Air Canada Tango logo, which we did not do earlier. just to be sure. Now is where it gets pretty interesting. Let's go in the File tab, Open, and let's open our paint kit. It is in Desktop, Phoenix A320 paint kit, 
and let's select the fuselage here. This is a PSB file and we can open it with the development version of GIMP which we downloaded earlier. This may take a while because it is very large. Once it has almost fully loaded, it's going to ask you if you want to co convert the color profile. Let's put yes, convert. I'll explain what we are seeing a little bit. The three colors are dedicated to each file texture for the fuselage. The red is going to be the fuse one, which is going to go from here to a little bit here. The yellow greenish is starting here and is finishing around here. It's going to be the fuse two texture. And the blue part is the fuse three. For our livery creation, we have to hide this layer. We can press on the eye here. Now, usually, we would put the text in Blender and export it on this fuselage. But this paint kit is very well made. The fuselage is very straight and we can put any text we want without it looking very bad directly on GIMP. So we'll do that with our Air Canada Tango. Now, let's go search for it in the first tab. Here we go in the Layers section and drag it all the way to the fuselage. You can really sit here. Now it is not feasible because it dropped in the cell section. We can then drag it all the way to the top and we can now displace it around. Let's look at a picture of our aircraft that is on this side. I find one on Fricker by Reynard Sinebold. We can see that the logo goes from the first window to the second to last from the emergency exit. Let's adjust it then. We'll drag it here. And on this tool, let's press right click and scale. We can now downscale it all the way to here, around this. We can now zoom in and place it like in the picture. Once you finally get it to look right, you can copy it and paste it on the other side. But we have to do something. Press to transform, rotate 90 degrees clockwise twice. This will reverse it like we need because it is reversed on the other side. Before we forget about it, let's put our fin number on the gear. Let's go in decals and drag it here. Let's do the same thing by dragging it here. That's where it is located. For each livery, we have to look for the details. We c this can be done in this section, a little bit below, the details number one. We have everything from painted screws to panels to windows outline. For this livery, we pretty much need all of them, but we may notice some things that we don't need. For example, something very subtle has to be changed. We have to remove this red part and the gray behind the flight recorder here, caution. We can see in the delivery that it is white. For this, we're gonna go in the decal section of the details and with the paintbrush in the erase mode. Let's erase it like that. For the gray, let's put decals base color and erase it like that. We also do not have this red rectangle in the delivery. As we can see here, it is not near the door. So, we'll delete it in the decals base color. Like this. I almost forgot something. We can see on the livery that there is no red outline around some windows indicating when to, where to cut in case of an emergency, while there is on the paint kit. For this, we will need to delete it in emergency cut point. 
can just simply delete this layer and it will disappear like that. I will now place the registration in the website as a time lapse. See you in a bit. One of the last things we have to do before exporting our livery is checking the weathering opacity. When selecting this layer, we can select how much dirty we want our livery to be. In our case, it is pretty dirty. It was already old at the time. So, we'll put the opacity at around 80%, like I did here. If you have a government aircraft or something that is really clean, you can put it at around 20%. Good. Now, you may notice that our decals look a little bit too clean to be on an aircraft. That's normal, because they are all the way to the top of the layers. We have to bring each of them down all the way to the bottom, just above the base color, like this. Our livery is almost ready to be exported. It looks pretty better now. Just before that, it is very important to save it. We'll go here, save as. And we can put it where you want. For example, I'll put it in the Phoenix A320 Paint Kit folder. I'll name it Air Canada Tango Fuse dot XCF. It is the GIMP standard. This may take a while too. One last thing we will do before exporting our fuselage is set up in the delivery folder. We will go in desktop, Phoenix A320 paint kit, and copy the example folder. Let's paste it into the community folder. And now, let's replace the example 1, 2, 3 by our specific uh, order. The order will be the airline ICAO, the registration, our initial, and the resolution. So, I'm going to do a CT, Air Canada Tango, Charlie Foxtrot Papa Whiskey Echo, the registration, MJ, my initials, and 8K. That's the resolution, like this. Now, we will copy this title because we will need it for the rest of the example. So here, let's go in manifest.json and edit it with Notepad++, which we installed earlier. So, the title, Phoenix A Airbus A320, and we're gonna title it Air Canada Tango. We're also gonna put the registration. For the creator, I'm just gonna add my username to Phoenix Simulation, like that. And we can save it, and now close it too. There is also a copy cockpit setup file. Let's edit it with Notepad++ too, and we'll go all the way to the back and to the bottom, sorry, and put the registration in. Charlie Foxtrot, Papa Whiskey Echo. The cell cal, we can put pretty much anything we want. I'll put like B, E, D, D, S, because I don't know how, uh, what is the actual cell cal registration of this specific aircraft. Tell me if you know how to find it out. Next, let's go in Sim Object, Airplanes, and that's where we're gonna paste our title here. Let's replace example one to three and press Ctrl V, like this. Same thing for the texture right after, like this. Now, the aircraft.cfj. This is the most important file to edit. 
Here we have to modify the title to what we have. We'll paste it like that. Same thing for the texture file, like this. And the UI, vi UI vari variation is what is going to be shown in deliveries. We're going to put Air Canada Tango. Try Foxtrot Papa Whiskey Echo 8K, like this. We're going to do the same thing as the creator in the manifest here. Bernstein, Phoenix Simulations. Here, the ATC flight number, don't have to change it, but the ATC airline is going to be ACT, Air Canada Tango. And that looks pretty good. I think we're fine. Once we have cloned the aircraft.cfj, you may notice the texture uh, folder is empty. Now, we have to go in the community folder and scroll to wherever the base Phoenix aircraft is. It is here. We're gonna go in sim objects, airplanes, Phoenix 320, textures, and we're gonna take the textures that we need. In our case, we're gonna need the SFML and SFMR, which are the engines. Only take the albedo is gonna be useful. We're gonna copy it and paste it where we need. Let's do this for the other. We have also Fuse 1, Fuse 2, Fuse 3. We have also the tail. Not the wings, it's not going to be useful. The winglets. And also, I forgot the gear. Is that it? Also, the thumbnail. We're going to edit the thumbnail. Yep, that's good. Let's copy it and paste it here. Great, we're now ready to export. For the export, we're going to right-click on one of the layers here. For example, the details layer group. And we're going to press merge visible layers. Make sure uh, merge within active groups only is checked. And press merge. We still have the wireframe because it was hidden. We don't need it. We can delete it. But I will show you what it does. This is very useful for some liveries. I recommend using it when doing curves and things like that. Now we can show our SEL again. Nice. We'll go in the corner and press this tool, the rectangle select. We'll press the first few pixel in the, I'm sorry, in the corner like this and select the size as 8192 by 1,900, no, 1,100, 8,192, sorry about that, and press enter, like this. As you can see, it selects a little bit of the green too, it is normal. Make sure the base layer is selected and press right click, select select, and float. Now, create a new layer with this, and, de it and delete the other ones. Here, that looks good. We'll press the Image tab and fit Canvas to Layers. Now, we're going to go in the File tab, Export As, and we will find our, um, our livery. Here, and we will export it to Fuse One Albedo. Replace it, and we'll we will have compression options. Always use the XT3 and generate mid maps. Once it is exported, you need to go back in the steps a little bit until it looks like this. I couldn't record it because I had a small problem. Sorry about that. So if you're in this situation, you can create a new layer, and here press Merge Down. It's going to merge the fuselage back together, and we can select the fuse tube.
Now is the time we're going to use Blender. So let's reduce this page. There we go. And open the program. Once you are in the program, you can click out of this window and delete the main cube. We won't need it. Once this is done, you go in the File tab, click Import, FBX, and find your Phoenix A320 paint kit. There is a model included, which is also very well made. Now that our aircraft is imported, we can see that we have the fuselage. We have already worked on the fuselage, so we don't need it. We'll delete it. It makes things easier. Also, the winglets and the engines are only one color, so we won't need them either. Only the tail. To paint the tail, let's select it and go in the Texture Paint tab. Now, we can reduce this. There are several options we can use. In the Stroke section, we have the Space. The Space is just the normal drawing mode. We have also the line, in which you can do a line that will be straight, and a curve where you can configure some curves. But we'll use space for the moment. We have to change something very important before trying delivery in Blender. We have to go in the fall off here and select the square. This will allow for very sharp drawing. Now, let's go on the tail. And here, in the Texture Slots section, press plus and base color. We will select white, because this is what we want as the background color of the livery. And, for the width and height, 8192 for both. When using Blender, if you want to turn the camera, you press the middle click of the mouse and move it around. If you want to move you press the hand and you move around the mouse. If you want to paint, it's the left click. If you want the options of the paint, it's the right click. To zoom in and out, it's the mouse wheel, like this. If we want to paint our tail all purple, we have to select the right color. First, make sure the RGB option is selected. After that, let's go select our logo here, take the pencil, Press Ctrl and left click, and there we have it. Now, we see that the red is at 39.2, the green is at 4.7, and the blue is at 50.6. So, 32.9 for the blue, for the red, has to be applied here. But, it is important to note that in Blender, 100 is 1, so you have to do some calculations and consider that 39.2 would be 0 0.392. The green is 4.7, so it's going to be 0 0.047. Sorry, whoops. And the blue, it's going to be 0 0.50 and 6, because it was 0 0.50.6. Nice. Now we can paint our tail. First, let's go in the symmetry tab here and press the mirror X. This will mirror everything that we paint on the other side. So, let's go. Our tail is now purple. Very nice. We're now going to use an option that is important for pretty much every livery you do on Blender. It is the stencil option. Now, go on texture properties and press new here. Also press open and let's go in our decals. For me, I'll select Air Canada logo. That's what we want on the tail. Like this, open image. We do not see everything yet. That's because we have to go back to the tool properties, go in texture here and press the mapping to stencil. Like this, now we can see it. Always make sure to press Image Aspect and Reset Transform. That's going to make sure it's uh, rendered properly. Now, we can take a look at our image again and see how it looks. So we can see it pretty much takes almost all of the tail and it touches a little bit here. 
Once you think it is well placed, go and select the secondary color here and make sure it is white. That's going to allow all the colors to be stenciled on the livery. And you can draw. You may have noticed on the tail that there is a gray part here that takes up uh, the front. We're going to do it. I'm going to select a color that is uh, something like that, around 0 0.75 for each. And this is where the line stroke option comes in. Here we can press the X to remove our texture and We can look at the gray area and paint it here, like this. That looks pretty good. Now, I will also be doing the 402 fin number that is present on the tail. We will use the same technique as we did for the logo. I have to press image aspect and reset transform again just to be sure that it is well placed. When drawing text or numbers on your aircraft, do not forget to turn off the symmetry like I did, so it doesn't mirror. Great, now that our tail is done, we can export it as an image. We will press this little button here and select tail base color. And now our UV maps are updated. Let's press image here and save as. We'll save it in the decals folder. You can leave this, uh, this title if you want, but I'll uh, rename it to tail ACT. Yeah, tail ACT is good. Now, we have to open the PSD paint kit file for the tail. Let's go in, in Phoenix A320 paint kit and F, FNX A320 tail. This will automatically open in GIMP. Once opened, before forgetting, let's put the weathering at 80% as we did on the fuselage. Like this. And let's go in our decals and drag our tail on the file, like this. It should center it automatically. If not, you can center it by going in the corner and making sure it's really centered. Now we can drag it below uh, the stab color and below the livery here. Now it makes more sense. And we have all the weathering above the livery. Looks really nice. Now we can merge everything like this. As we did, make sure it's checked. And remove the wireframe. Now export it, same as the, the same as the fuselage. The rest of the process is very simple. Let's go back to the paint kit here and press on FNX A320 CFM. We won't have to paint the engine this time, but it is the same process as we did for the fuselage or the tail. Let's just put our weathering through uh, 80%. Remove the wireframe. You can remove it whenever you want. And we're pretty much done. Let's merge it and export it. For the engines, we have to export it uh, to both uh, both the engines. So we have um, the engine left and the engine right. Left. And right.
The winglets are also very simple, but we have an extra step. We have to paint them. I just pressed here to open them. We're going to go in the bucket, make sure our purple is selected as the main color, and make sure we are on the paint here layer. Let's just left click. And that's it. You can just merge. And remove the wireframe. And export, of course. Now, we do not have a paint kit for the wings or the gear, so it may be difficult for certain liveries. But, for the gear, we can do something pretty easy. Let's just go in the livery and open the texture file. Once it is opened, make sure the main surface is selected. Next, go in the rectangle select option and select ellipse selects. Now, you can see all the rim textures for the gear. This is the rear gear, and this is the front gear. We can zoom in with Ctrl and the mouse wheel. Now, let's select the corner of each circle, like this, one at a time. And once we're done, let's go in the Color tab, Exposure, and select a value for the exposure. I'm going to put minus 3. Yeah, that looks good. Well, minus 2.5. It's not that dark. Yeah, like this. And we have to do this for every one of them. As you may have noticed, this is far from the cleanest job I have ever done. There's some spot I forgot, and there was some mistakes I did here. But it does not matter, matter too much. So, let's export it back. As we already have mid-maps, I'm going to select the option Use Existing Mid-Map here. Well, now there's only one last step before we can see our livery in the sim. Let's check the texture folder. Make sure all the file size are the same, because you may have forgotten something. It happens to me often. And the wiggle it, it is normal that it is at a, normal, a, a lower size, because it is in a lower resolution too. Now, let's open one of our programs we downloaded, the thumbnail generator. We won't use the thumbnail maker today, but the layout generator will be really useful. Here, press on Tools, Layout Generator, and Locate Livery Folder. Here, we'll just select our uh, livery folder here in the Community folder. Select and save and merge new layout.json. It's as simple as that. Now, let's boot our sim. To really see what the livery looks like, I prefer spawning in the world than really seeing what the livery looks like in the garage. So we'll do that. There it is. We have the default thumbnail for now, but Air Tango, Charlie Fox, Red Papa, Whiskey Echo, 8K is here. I'm gonna spawn in Montreal. Well. That looks pretty fine. We can compare this livery to the one in real life. It is important also to look at the de little details you put just to be sure you haven't forgotten anything. Now we're gonna do the thumbnail. There is a way that is more complicated with the developer mode that makes it really clean. But I'm just gonna save time and take a screenshot like this.
There we go. Now, let's select the screenshot we want for the thumbnail. Co uh, copy it. Put it in the decals folder. And now let's go back to the texture of our livery. Let's open the thumbnail with GIMP. Once it is in GIMP, go back to your decals, select the screenshot, and drag it on. Now, you can scale it to the resolution of the image, so 1624, and make sure it's chained here. Now, delete the original thumbnail and press here by right clicking layers to image size. Now you can overwrite the original thumbnail. We will do the same thing for the small thumbnail. Go back to the texture file and press thumbnail small. Open it with GIMP. And you can take the layer we have done here. Just drag it on and Select the resolution of the image. So 16. No, that's 600 for the small thumbnail. Now, delete the original thumbnail and overwrite thumbnail now small. I would recommend, just to be sure, rerunning the thumbnail generator. Like this, and you're done. Now, you can go take your livery and send it to a point zip. Now, you can send it to whoever you want and you can upload it on Flight Sim Pointio. Well, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for creating a livery for the Phoenix A320. If I can help you with something, please comment on this video or contact me in, on Discord. I was a little bit tired at the end of this video, so sorry if I made a lot of mistakes. Well, see you soon.